there's one. I knew it. I knew it. What did I tell you? And look how fat he is. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I've generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. What is going on everybody and welcome to the series I'm gonna call 100 Ponds. Here on this channel, my goal is to help you guys become better bass anglers, and I do that through a, a, a variety of ways. I love taking you guys out on my bass boat, I love showing you guys the tournament scene, I love just doing random bass fishing challenges, but of course, like I mentioned, my number one goal is to help you guys catch more fish. And I would say the majority of you guys out there do not have access to a bass boat, kayaks, any sort of watercraft. You guys are bank fishermen. You're pond fishermen, you're lake fishermen, you fish in rivers, creeks, and streams, and that is what this series is catered towards. I want to fish 100 ponds in my home state of Texas and everywhere around the country, trying to learn as much as I can about pond fishing and become a better pond angler myself, using just one tackle box, one bag of soft plastics, and a few rods. My main goal for this 100 pond series is to fish several different ponds in each one of my videos, showing you guys a few things about each pond to help you understand your bodies of water better. So first, we're gonna show you guys a drone shot of what the pond looks like, unless of course this pond is in a secret location that a buddy of mine who, let's say, gave me the pond would not want me to disclose, but if that's not the scenario, it's going to be a drone shot. Then I'm gonna share with you guys the exact conditions that I was faced with on the fishing day. So whether it's spawn, post-spawn, summer, fall, the like, uh, the water clarity, water temperature, if I can get that water temperature, and anything that would help me and of course help you catch more bass and then my metric for ultimate success on each pond before I can move to the next one unless of course I totally fail in this metric for success is catching one bass as soon as I catch one bass and I feel like I've taught you guys enough about that body of water I'm going to move on to the next pond in this series so we're gonna strap on the chest mount grab ourselves a few rods reels and of course our tackle box and tackle bag and we're gonna get down to begin pond number one So pond number one, what a beauty. You guys might have seen this pond before if you follow my channel for really any amount of time. I have filmed a lot of my pond instructionals here. It's a pretty diverse pond. And here are the conditions. I may have put them on the screen over the drone shot. Again, not quite sure. This is my first one in the series, so I'm not sure how I'm going to edit all these together. But the conditions we have today are classic post-spawn fishing. It's not quite summer here in Texas, but most of the bass should be done spawning. As a matter of fact, here's an old bed that was abandoned. There's a bed down there that was abandoned. So yeah, these bass in here are definitely post-spawn. They're probably feeding on bluegills. It's going to be the main forage in today's body of water. I might not always know that information, but because I've been to this pond before, I know that the main forage of this pond, at least most of the year, and especially this time being post-spawn, main forage is going to be bluegill. Uh, water clarity, I would say it's five plus feet. So it's, I'm gonna go by categories. Water clarity is clear. This is a clear body of water. You can probably see it looking down on the water right there. Pretty dang clear. In terms of cover in the water, we have a little bit of submerged timber, not really a whole lot. We've just got submerged vegetation that sometimes becomes emergent on the top of the water. And the air temperature is probably 68, 70. I could check for you guys, but I don't really put as much of an emphasis on air temperature as I do time of the year. These bass right now are gonna be feeding on what they're feeding on, whether it's 45 outside or 92 outside. The kind of the post-spawn time of the year is pretty consistent in terms of air temperature. I will get a uh, water temperature gauge so I can give you guys the exact water temperature. I'm guessing though, since I know where the lakes are this time of year, this water is probably about 70 degrees. So the first thing that I'm gonna try is I'm gonna do a little bit of a walk around kind of the shallower area that I know of here with a vibrating jig, the thunder cricket, and a top water frog, the old poppin' perch. And then if we can eliminate the shallow areas, we'll kind of focus on doing a little Texas rigging or deeper vibrating jig on the uh, deeper section of the body of water. So I'm actually gonna get all the way over here. It looks like 
water hyacinth has actually grown up. So add another thing to the list of cover in this body of water, we have more emergent vegetation. What I do know though, is that it looks really, really juicy. So first cast, we'll make a short one because I don't like catching fish on my first cast. Just released a frog video on my channel talking about, actually, I don't know if I just released it because I don't know when this video will come out, but talking about my, uh, my reasonings for throwing the frog. And if you missed that, just search on YouTube, Tyler's Real Fishing Frog, and you will find the answers to your dying questions. Now, why did I pick up a frog as my first lure for this pond? Well, it's because we have overcast conditions and it's the time of the year when a frog can be affected. Those two things led me to want to pick up the topwater frog. If I get to a pond and there's zero vegetation on the top of the water, I don't care if you're talking lily pads or cattails, hydrilla, this kind of weird, I don't even know what kind of grass this is. It looks like hyacinth that floats around. If you don't have any of that, a frog is not gonna be my first choice because I know that a frog works best around vegetation on top of the water. And so that's why I picked for this frog first. Now, in these conditions, if we had a super open pond, I may still throw a topwater. I may pick up a, uh, a topwater popper or a, most likely a walking topwater bait, but a frog would not be the one because a frog, in my opinion, like I said, works best around this type of vegetation. If you can get away with treble hooks in your topwater, a popper does a much better job of hooking fish than a topwater frog does. And so I would much rather throw a popper to actually catch more fish than a frog. But because we have these conditions, I'm reaching for the frog. All right, we have worked around the whole shallow section here. No bites on the frog. So we're gonna X and A the frog, unless I'm feeling frisky. We're gonna work our way out to this little deeper section. And once, oh, well, bass was just cruising the shallows chase it after bluegill. So at least I know I'm thinking the right things. As I'm walking right here, y'all, I'm looking at the water to see if I can see any signs of life. And I mean, I see bluegill everywhere. I just saw two different bass chase a little section of bluegill that were bedding. Okay, y'all can't see this in the chest cam, but about a one and a half pound bass is currently like chasing some tiny bluegill right here. I pretty much know what he's gonna bite. Boom, caffeine shed. There's one, I knew it. I knew it. What did I tell ya? Right away, little bluegill bass. And look how fat he is. He has been a oh, soft belly too. He's been feeding up on bait fish. Oh, and right as the dang rain comes, we catch our first bass of the day. And you know what, folks? I know that this pattern here is replicable because A, I've had prior experience here, but B, I've seen literally, that's like the, the, I saw four fish chasing around bluegill. I make, that was my like third cast with this thing and I got one. So I can tell you guys that we have figured out this pattern. I would consider pawn numero uno to be a success. So we're gonna clear our spool and get on over to pond number two. I guarantee you that at many times throughout this 100 pond series, we're gonna get kicked off the ponds. And this is another likely one to get kicked off of. It's also another likely one that doesn't have any fish. So I'm gonna walk down here. Now that I see it in person, there's probably not any fish in here. And this could actually be a pretty cool part of the series is that a lot of these ponds I walk up to, I can tell you guys right away if they're worth fishing or not. This one here is not worth fishing. The whole thing's too shallow. I don't see any signs of bigger fish. I see a few bait fish here and there, but this pond here, we're gonna skip right over. This will be pond 1.5. All right, officially pond number two. This here is what I call your classic residential pond. It's got retaining walls around the entire thing, relatively dirtier water, looks pretty shallow. I don't know if it's got grass or not. There goes some kind of fish busting out of the shallows. I kind of wish I had brought my sunglasses so I could tell what it was. But 
this is a very classic pond that I don't get a whole lot of chance to fish because I fish mostly natural stuff. So this will be a good little challenge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk the bank a little bit, see if we can get a gauge on what's going on. But I mean, like I said, it's pretty, pretty dirty water. So I don't see much. Man, that's the second. I just saw one other fish spook off the shallows and it looked pretty dang big. So I feel like this is carp, not bass. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's carp. <laughs> They're everywhere. So that immediately is a bad sign. Slightly good sign though. I found somebody's craw, but also bad sign. They left it here. So that's gonna be trash that I'm gonna take with me because I wanna clean up these ponds. All right, first things first, I'm going to take my vibrating jig and probably switch it out for a black and blue one because this water clarity is significantly dirtier. I'm gonna cover a little bit of water and then if I can get any bites in certain areas, I'll slow down, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a cover water pond because I can't see any visible cover. It's just retaining walls around the entire thing. I don't really think it's effective to fish super duper slow. So we're looking in my tackle box, trying to find my dang black and blue craws, wherever I put them. Here they are, black and blue rage bugs. And we're going to snip snip green pumpkin chatterbait and replace her with black and blue and since we got dirty water no need to go wimpy on the trailer we're gonna go full rage bug pick one of these claws off and then rig the rest of it on there all right my first cast on the bottom has gotten me this type of grass so we're gonna get to the conditions part this pond here has got dirty water i'm saying less than one foot visibility let me put my vibrating jig yeah we got less than one foot visibility the cover down there is snot grass, which uh, Vibrating Jig does not play well with. It may not be very long that we throw this thing, but if we can get around it, we will. Uh, water temperature, I just felt it. It's a little bit warmer. It's probably 75 or so. These bass should definitely be post-spawn in here. I see zero reason for these bass to still be spawning with dirtier water. Dirty water heats up quicker, so all these hot days we've been having around here are gonna warm up that water, get these fish farther along in the cycle. Same exact wind conditions, but it affects it a little bit more in this pond because we don't have as many trees or high banks to protect us. It's just a flat area with tons of retaining walls. This might be a carp hole. If you come upon a body of water and you're seeing carp or gar go everywhere, kind of automatically starting behind the eight ball is oftentimes they will push bass out of an area, mess up the entire ecosystem. Carp are just generally not the best for a healthy bass population. Now what I do in these ponds here is I work the only piece of structure available, which is the retaining wall. Sometimes bass will push themselves up against the retaining wall as a little piece of uh, cover to hang on. And I think this is the most high percentage thing I can do is just cast my thunder cricket around this super shallow water by these retaining walls, occasionally making casts out towards the fountains and the aerators. These aerators though aren't doing squat, this water clarity is dookie. This is not my kind of pond, but I know that bass live in places like this, so I'm not gonna rule it out. No way, no way, is that a bass? Oh my gosh, I've got one. He hit it as it hit the water. I'm recording. Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's a success. I knew it. Covering water against the bank with the Thunder Cricket. Got myself a little one and a half pound largemouth. And he, he ate that thing good. Good grief. Well, you're a skinny boy. So that wrecks my whole theory that there's no bass in here. Those things I might've seen skirmishing, maybe, just maybe, some of those are bass. So we're gonna give it a little bit more, that was a bit quick. It is nice to have success that quickly, but now that I've caught one, I wanna see if there's any bigger ones. I'm gonna go around the entire thing with the vibrating jig, seeing if I can just get one more. Ew, let's keep my lure real high. Now what I keep having to do there is slap the snot grass off my bladed jig and so Two things I'm doing slightly wrong here. One, 
bladed jig is not really the best for this situation. I like guess swim jig might be a little bit better, but because I'm covering water so fast, I can keep that bait, oop, might've been a bite. I can keep that bait higher in the water column. And the other thing that could help me is if I had a lighter weight vibrating jig, but beggars can't be choosers. I did not come prepared for that. My tackle box will get more and more uh, finished and refined as the series goes on. As I'm working my way around, I'm realizing it's like, it's like really shallow here, like a foot, <laughs> sometimes less than that. Water's cleared up a tiny bit because we don't have so much wind on this north end of the, of the pond, but I don't even know if working the bank right now is the smart move at all. I think that fish that I caught was in a little bit deeper water. This here is, I mean, it's not deep at all. I just really doubt there's gonna be a bass up this shallow. I could be wrong. I'll be wrong many times throughout this challenge, but ah, I keep getting snot grass after I'm reeling it really fast. So we're gonna keep walking until I get to a deeper section. Even with that one fish catch, I, I would not come back here. This would not be a pond that I frequent. It doesn't look good. It don't smell good. And even though we had technical success on this challenge, this, is, this would not be one of my favorite ponds. So let's pack on up, get our rods and tackle, and head on to pond number three. Pond number three. The smallest one I've fished thus far, but I saw it on the map, looked juicy, pulled up to it, and as you guys can see from that little view there, it is pretty dang grassy, but it does have some deeper sections to it. So we're gonna work our way around this very clear body of water pretty quickly here. Again, the whole goal of this challenge is of course to teach you guys but it's also to fish as much as possible. There's gonna be some videos where I you know, don't have much success and there's gonna be some where I catch giants, but I've just got a feeling there's a few bass in here. This isn't the place that a giant is gonna live, I don't think, but it seems like a good ecosystem. Is that a bullfrog? Oh, ho ho! Got him, ha 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 ha, you little stinker. Bring it in here, bring it in. Bring it in, wow, what a massive frog. Sheesh, you're the kind, oh my gosh, he just peed all over me. Thank you, buddy. Look at this frog. This guy's going on the gram. Look at those massive legs, he's peeing all over me. Is that bad? I've got frog pee all over my leg. We're not gonna tell the wife about that one. It's in these little ponds here that have little grassy you know, holes and such. That's probably where your bass are gonna be hanging is in the depths of those little holes. So it's best to cover water until you see one of those areas and then work it really slow. Places like this aren't as affected by the wind. So I usually defer to weightless as opposed to weighted. So like, I'm not gonna throw a vibrating jig in this situation. I'm not gonna throw uh, a regular jig, a heavy Texas rig. This is more of a weightless, soft plastic, top water type pond. Um, let's see, conditions. We didn't go over that. Once again, I'm a doof. Uh, Water clarity, again, clear. Pond one was clear, pond two was dirty. Stained is right in the middle, but we have not fished a stained pond yet. Water temperature, I don't know, 72 or so. Small body of water, but it's clear, so it's gonna be more affected by cold fronts and such. Not getting any bites on the top water frog. So we're gonna put this down here in a few seconds. I'm gonna kinda do a little walk around the other side that I haven't disturbed as much. Um, with the wacky rig. See if I can pitch it in any of these holes. And this could be a total waste, but this one has more potential, in my opinion, than the one point, pond 1.5 that I skipped over. This at least has some, some depth to it. The other one looked very similar to this, but was completely shallow across the whole thing. So we're gonna get my little wacky rig set up, my favorite little wacky rig set up ever. Loose speed stick, $80 rod. This is the brand new Custom Pro version two comes out soon for you guys to get. And uh, I think this is 
15 pound flora. Oh, well, I had a bite. I'm guessing that was a bluegill. I'm sure as I fish more and more ponds, I'll find giveaways on each one that really allow me to know whether it's worth fishing or not. Fail. Although, if there's no bass there, is it really a fail? Well, I guess I can't make the definitive statement that there's no bass here, because there could be. And I just didn't use the right tactics to catch them. So we're gonna move on to pond number four. Pond number four is on the same property as pond number three, just about a two minute walk from where I was. And this is not technically a pond. This is a dammed up section of a creek. But I mean, I think it displays a lot of pond like behaviors. It's got relatively still water. It's not like flowing like a river. It's got some deep sections, got some shallow grassy sections. I think it really imitates a pond very well. So. We're going to, uh, so we're going to first cast around the wacky rig around some of these bluff walls and then mix up with the frog and this stuff. Hey, puppy. How you doing? That's Callie. Hey, Callie. <laughs> what are you guys trying to catch? Algae. Algae? For what reason? Oh, okay. Well, good luck. It's going to grow back pretty fast. Conditions here, we have, I'd say our first, it's clear to stain. I mean, I can see down like two and a half feet. Um, so, not clear water for sure. We're going to throw this in the stained category. And I would say it's stained because you have a little bit of running water or just because we have an algae bloom going on, whatever it is. It's not perfectly clean water. Bottom composition looks like mud and sand. We've got mostly snot grass. With a little bit of shoreline vegetation, as you can see here. That is the cover and structure. What else are we doing? Uh, one wind direction, not really a whole lot of wind back here. So that's not, that's not gonna factor much at all. We're gonna work our way to the waterfall. Let's see if I can get a cast all the way over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a good cast right there. Come on, something in that corner. That's a high percentage corner. Away from the waterfall, fish can sit over there and wait until they wanna pop out and feed. We're all about high percentage things here. That was a high percentage cast. We're gonna make a few more of those, hopefully squeak a few good casts in different areas up there. Like right there, good, perfect. Oh yeah, that's the cast, beautimous. Oh, dang it, I had a bite. That was way too far away. If I was to pull up and check if that was a fish, I would have not been able to feel it, so. Give it one more cast. Last cast with the frog right there. Next to some of those ferns, overhanging overhanging ferns, not usually a common uh, fishing cover. We're gonna go back through with the wacky rig on just the deep sections. A wacky rig by a waterfall is killer. This is hard. I would much rather fish in my boat. This is definitely a more juicy looking area, but we do have a family throwing rocks from the ledge, which usually doesn't make the bite better. You know what, maybe it's a, maybe it's a new thing. Maybe bass wanna be disturbed by rocks coming from the heavens before they eat. That could be a new thing. All right, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I've gotta take a dump. Look at this, folks. Little babbling brook. I guess we've technically left the, uh, the pond we were fishing. I guess we got one option here, and that's the wacky rig. It looks way, yeah, too many rocks here for a frog. Oh, oh, I just had a nasty bite. Like, annihilated it. Had to be bluegill. There's something. What did we get? What did we get? What did we get? Hey, we got ourselves a bluegill on the wacky rig. Not a success. Still a fail, but glad to have something. That's kind of the mentality of, of bank fishing, at least for me, is like, whatever bites, man, that's fun. Give the wacky rig a little old flip in there. Back in the body of water we're actually going for. Fell a little bit short, but you know what? That was exhilarating. Four out of 100 done, pretty crazy. We'll see y'all back in the truck. 
Always, always, always protect your rods when you travel. This here, the Slicks Rod Socks. Same company that makes Outcast Tackle Jigs, the Slicks, and I partner with them. They keep my rods fresh all season long. No breaks in those tips whatsoever. So if I'm gonna give this video a rating, I'm gonna give it a B plus. Uh, purely for the fact that fishing was a, a C plus to a B minus. Of course, I caught some fish, but didn't have a whole lot of success. Adventure of the video, fishing all different kinds of ponds, that I'm gonna give that an A plus. And then of course, getting the excitement of this series started here on the channel, the 100 pond series, I would say it's an A plus plus. So you know what, maybe we're like a B plus. But of course, I would not be where I am if it were not for you guys. Not only would I not have the, the YouTube channel and the reach that I do without you guys, I would not have the sponsors that I have without you guys. And this series going forward cannot continue without y'all's help, especially if you live in Texas or anywhere the Bass Pro Tour, the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour is going. I travel with them on tour filming content for those pros. If you live along any of those routes, or if, like I said, you live in Texas, I would love to come fish your pond. Whether it's a pond that you fish all the time and you catch tons of bass at, maybe it's your grandpa's ranch and you have tons of big bass in that pond, or it's one that you have a lot of trouble catching bass and you want to see if I can challenge myself to catch bass in your hard to fish ponds, I want to fish y'all's ponds. So please go ahead and send me a message on Instagram if you have some fire ponds for me because I want to make this series really, really fun and informational for you guys. So as much as it is in my power, I'm going to try to fish a lot of these ponds with you guys as subscribers. As always, all the gear that I use in today's video will be linked in the video description below. The comment section is always open for y'all to be discussing with one another. My name's Tyler and we'll see you next time here on TRF.